Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a wonderful Wednesday so far. Today we're going to be delivering our daily cryptocurrency market update. There's still this kind of dark cloud over markets caused by the Federal Reserve talking about um, implementing deflationary measures to tackle inflation. This has got markets across the board somewhat spooked, even though many of them continue to climb. The feeling I get is there's no real direction. And I think that a lot of big money is probably sat on the sidelines waiting to see what the outcome of the Federal Reserve's um, decisions is going to be. Now, that potentially doesn't kick into effect for a couple of months. We know that they are in the process of tapering off um, purchasing, uh, which should finish around about March, sort of culling back stimulus, if you will. And then they are indeed thinking um, about upping interest rates. So you've still got this sort of dark cloud over the markets at the moment. Um, this is an article. We're going to get into a number of things in this video. Important for me to get that overarching statement out there. You know, Bitcoin is now a part of the kind of financial markets um, or certainly has adopted itself as that. And of course, what takes place certainly in the Forex market with the Federal Reserve having such an influential position that they do. Um, has a knock-on effect on our industry. So we're going to get into a number of things. We're going to be looking at Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at the dollar. These are literally, it's like a seesaw. You know, Bitcoin goes up, or sorry, the dollar goes down, Bitcoin goes up. Remember, the dollar is the one moving or not moving Bitcoin, um, which is, again, back to the Federal Reserve, why we're really paying a lot of attention to this. We'll dive into Ethereum. We'll take a look at Cardano, of course. And we're going to get into a number of interesting data points here. Um, this is from Glassnode, and this suggests that you know there's a lot of hodlers out there um, people are the number of hodlers continues to grow and this ups the floor for bitcoin so we'll get into this um tweet from glassnode we're also going to talk about some breaking news that intel essentially is step, stepping into the bitcoin mining space um, and coming up with an asic uh, miner essentially that they're claiming is going to be very energy efficient. Now, I would certainly argue, would Intel really be stepping into a space that they thought wasn't going to succeed? Intel, I think Intel is, last time I checked Intel, it's been a while, but I think it's $230 billion in terms of market cap. So it's a significant stock. Um, it's a significant company, sorry. You, I'm sure many of you that have got computers will know that they are the people that manufacture the CPUs that go into them. Um, so this is huge. And like I say, for me, a real vote of confidence. We continue to see crypto adoption um, in all kinds of forms continue. And this is something that we try and stress on every single video. The market cap that we're currently at, $2, $2 trillion, is very small in comparison with the scope of value that we could potentially capture. So we will be talking about that. The market is in extreme fear still. This really ties back and we have to talk about it, guys. I know you guys, some of you are probably getting a little bit bored of me talking about the Fed, but it's so important to watch. I've been looking at a lot of bonds, a lot of yield curves at the moment, because personally, I'm trying to figure out what direction. Um, as somebody that owns property, as somebody that owns crypto, don't really own stocks. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure out what kind of direction myself, I think markets generally are going. Are we going to enter a downturn? Are we going to enter an upturn? And really a lot of that is to do with the Federal Reserve and what they do or don't do in regards to interest rates. We've explained that they're on a very, very, um, they're treading on eggshells with interest rates because what they do could literally cripple small countries out there. Uh, because they won't be able to service the debt that they owe. Not only that, you know, if they up interest rates, that will naturally cause a downturn. We looked at data to suggest that typically that occurs six months after and you'll still continue to boom for six months or grow for six months until it gets realized. Um, so th there's so much going on. I don't want to confuse anybody, but this is something that we absolutely are paying attention to. And this is why you're seeing markets really directionless, not just our markets, you know, the uh, FTSE, FTSE 100, which is the 100 uh, top, stock index for the uk it's continuing to climbing um but it's not doing it you know it's still in a going in a positive direction remember the FTSE would have largely been held back due to the um pandemic and because the FTSE owns has a lot of travel and leisure so this didn't actually reach its all-time prior high to before march 2020 um so that could still be why we're seeing a bit of growth there the s p of course has done absolutely fantastic but we are seeing a slowdown and a downturn and indecision um, and volatility occur uh, and this is all on the headwind of the fed this of course is going to be echoed over into our market and remember just look at bitcoin 
and then look at the dollar chart and you can see they are literally a seesaw. It's a seesawing effect that we're seeing take place. Um, so what else do I have for you? So that, that, that's huge about Intel. Intel getting into um, Bitcoin mining. Intel to reveal new energy efficient Bitcoin mining ASIC at next ISSCC. The proposed Bonanza mine uh, promises to be a new viable option to, comp to compete against traditional mining rigs. This is another article I found. EU market regulators call for a ban of proof of work crypto mining. I don't really think they understand. With a lot of these regulators, it's kind of like governing bodies across the board for whatever industry you're in. I have a governing body as part of the professional industry that I I'm still in. Um, typically, it's not made up of people that are active within the industry. It's made up of regulators, if that makes sense. Many of you will understand that. So these people don't really understand that Bitcoin is actually becoming more and more energy efficient day by day. Um, now, this is great for, of course, proof of stake cryptos such as Cardano. Uh, Ethereum is moving to proof of stake for for uh, scaling reasons more than really anything. Um, and etc cetera, etc cetera, but really bad for bitcoin and what's bad for bitcoin is still very detrimental and bad for our space so we don't want them to clamp down on this i know there was a lot of people sort of cheering this um and and you know using it as a, a a bullish case for proof of stake cryptos but ultimately what's bad for bitcoin and we, we've seen that over the past couple of days you know cardano for example has been doing amazingly and in my opinion is going to continue to do very well but the weight of bitcoin really weighed on it um and, and when you have a lot of buy pressure coming into cardano what will typically happen is if the entire market is just selling off due to Bitcoin, eventually that sell pressure will become realized and then you'll find a base to continue moving higher. Um, so this isn't great, but this just shows that they're not really too sure about what they're on about. Yes, proof of stake is more energy efficient. In most cases, there are some where it's not. Um, very few cases where it's not, um, but this isn't great. But at least they're talking about crypto. I mean, it wasn't that long ago where we couldn't even get a mention. This is a survey that shows 67% of Canadians want to get paid in crypto by 2027. Back to my point that I keep bringing up that we're still very small as a market cap given the kind of value that we could attract and the fact that we're still yet to see any kind of significant adoption. The adoption rate for Bitcoin is non-existent. The adoption rate for crypto as a whole is really non-existent in the grand scheme of things. This is all still to come. Yes, you do have a couple of celebrities. Many of them are just trying to stay relevant and, and kind of jumping on the crypto bandwagon. Some of them really do believe in what's going on here with the cryptocurrency revolution, um, getting paid in it. But we, we're not seeing this really at all. We know there's a mayor, I think it's the Miami mayor, has taken his first or a couple of, but we're very small or very early in that kind of um, adoption curve for crypto. So this is all still to come. So these are a couple of interesting articles that I really want to share with you. This one's so relevant. First move at Asia, Fed tighten economic uh, woos continue to uh, spook cryptocurrency investors. And that's what we're seeing across the board. But ultimately, I think once we get a direction and what you've got to remember is inflation doesn't go away. Even if they up interest rates, the um, level of uh, or the increase in interest rates that they'd need to make to actually tackle real inflation would cripple any kind of economic growth and probably most definitely cause the entire um, United States to go into a depression, not a recession, a depression, which is worse than a recession. And not only that, that would also cause countries around the world to follow suit. Uh, Europe and the UK would definitely follow, in my opinion, and then your smaller countries would get hit even worse. And you'd see like Venezuelan sort of levels of inflation to try and stimulate that. Um, so they can't really do anything too significant. And that really brings me on to the point that Bitcoin, in my opinion, is going to continue to climb because it's never been as relevant as it has been today. Uh, and March 2020 really highlighted that. So there's nothing really to worry about. Ethereum following along with Bitcoin, a bit of a weird one for Ether. Um, you could be doing something similar to what you do over here and obviously over here on a bigger scale over here. And we see that continuation. You go to climb in to a higher zone but of course this is going to largely be dependent on bitcoin still believe that bitcoin is doing something similar to this and we set when we came down here we said look you, if you were going to recover you'd see that kind of v-shaped recovery what's more likely is consolidation structure before a recovery ensues and we still think that's the game plan of course cardano we've got sunday swap their first dex launching tomorrow which is huge for the network and um, we're already seeing amazing growth for that blockchain um, they continue to be and to pop up as the second most active cryptocurrency in terms of transactions um, and in terms of value often. Um, so that's without any dApps. So you guys know how bullish I am on that. 
And that's largely what I have for you. Okay, these, these, this is one more thing. And this is the Bitcoin percent of supply last active one year uh, plus a go. Bitcoin supply older than one year has steeply increased since October, since, uh, sorry, rising by 5.4% of uh, circulating Bitcoin. This indicates that 5.4% of the supply was moved, was last moved in early in the early bull from October 2020 to January 2021 and remains held in those wallets. So this suggests people are still more than happy to continue hodling. Uh, and this is something I think you're going to see continue. Um, the floor for hodlers continues to rise as more and more retail who are not typically hodlers because we know that a lot of the short term holders, which tends to be um, retail, actually get flushed out and end up selling at a loss. Um, but we're seeing hodlers really continue to do exactly that. And like I say, every single dip that we have, there's a whale somewhere, somehow, that's buying it up. So that's largely what I have for you. We will keep you up to date and keep these market updates running because they are important, you know, certainly given the sort of um, dynamic market conditions that we're under. Um, so that's what that's the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next YouTube video. If you enjoyed the content, like it, always appreciate it. So as a comment, see you in the next one, guys.